Joshua chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. <clears throat> that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Then it, when it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. I'm going to title this message tonight, Stacking Stones. And you can be seated. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm sure at some point in time in your walk with God, you have read Joshua chapter 4, the whole chapter. And in the chapter, in chapter 4, Joshua was leading the children of Israel through, through the Jordan River. He was leading them over to the other side, uh, and they were going to have to do battle for Jer in Jericho or for Jericho. And I'm no Bible scholar, but... I've read that so many times in the last few days. Anyway, um, the Lord spoke to Joshua and tells Joshua that he wants him to take 12 men. And that was one man out of every, from every tribe of Israel. And he says, I want you to take them to take a stone and carry it over on the other side. And so he, he takes 12 men. And they each get a stone out of the water bed, out of the, the, the bed of, of Jordan, Sister Gail. And he tells him, he said, you're going to cross over. Well, the priest had the Ark of the Covenant. And they stood. And I guess I know I've read it. I've read the Bible at least twice, front and back. And I just never paid much attention to this. But here's another episode where God parts waters. Yes. And the children of Israel again walk on dry land. Hallelujah. And he tells him, he said, you know, when you, when you get on the other side, I want you to take these stones and place them there where you lodge, where you stay, where you sleep, where you pitch your tent at, he tells him. And so... As long as the priest stood in that water bank, the waters stay at bay. But the moment that priest stepped over on dry land, Aunt Mary, the moment his foot became steady enough on dry land, the waters came back and flowed in those banks again. God did that not once, but twice. Twice for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. The 12 stones, bless her heart, she done hit her, her jaw on the, on the altar and now her head. The 12 stones that they had taken out of Jordan, Joshua set those stones in Gilgal, Gilgal mm -hmm. as a memorial. Right. He wanted to set up a memorial because the Lord had told him to. He set, up, he set that memorial up on the other side, on dry land, but he also set, set one up in that riverbank. Mm -hmm. That memorial was set there. They stacked those stones, and if you know anything about stones, and I don't, I read this, okay? So don't act like, oh, Sister Jennifer's so smart. She read this, okay? <laughs> but stones, I mean, you know, think about, can you think about stacking a rock? It doesn't stack easily, does it? So stones are not, that's not their nature is to stack, right. you know, like build a tower. That's not their nature. But God told him, he said, you're going to, so you're going to build a memorial. You're going to stack stones over here on dry land where you lodge, and you're going to do it in that riverbank. And it's going to be a memorial unto me, unto the children of Israel. And when the drought comes and the water goes down, in that riverbed, you're going to be able to see the stones right. as a remembrance of what I've done for you and my people. For the promises that I've given you. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The memorial was, was 
for the children of Israel, but it was for the children of Israel's children. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. Is we're supposed to be teaching our children of the goodness of God. Amen. I think I may have mentioned here a while back that I told my Sunday school class, and I'm probably going to really get off these notes because guess what? This is the ugliest handwriting. Well, I was scratching it on paper this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. Thank you, God. He changed my title. He changed the scriptures that I was reading. But anyway, it's okay. God is good. If he knows what he's doing and I don't. And uh, I will tell you this, not just that, but then Melissa texted this morning, which I really, I knew that she still wasn't feeling well, and then Brother Brandon texted, and Michael texted, and I thought, <laughs> well, Lord, you know, I have, and I won't lie, I have thought within myself that maybe people, it's different for a man to get up here behind this pulpit. There's a, there's a lot of people that do not believe that God would anoint a woman to speak. That God would not anoint a woman to preach. But I beg to differ with you. I have felt the calling, and I told God I would walk through it. That's been, you, that's been several, several years ago. But anyway, so I called Tracy and said, y'all coming to church, huh? He said, yeah, why? I said, well, just make sure I have somebody to talk to tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's okay, though. It's okay. Hallelujah. And she's fine, Madison. Hallelujah. Things happen in our lives. I'm going I'm to move over to something that I wrote that I thought about as I was trying to finish it up this afternoon. The stones was for memorial, for remembrance. Uh, that's what it was for. It was so that they wouldn't forget yeah. where God had brought them from, right. where God was bringing them to, mm -hmm. and what he had, had done for them, the promises. And so I thought about it this afternoon, and I thought, well, you know, the world understands what a memorial is, mm -hmm. and our children are taught what memorials are in school. Mm -hmm. Me and my husband just went on a vacation, and we went to a lot of memorials in Washington, D.C. There's the Pearl Harbor Memorial over in Hawaii. Most of us will never go to that. But that is to remind us of what they did on December the 5th, wasn't it? Seven. Seven. December the 7th. That's to remember the men and women that died on our soil. Hallelujah. 9-11. Some of you younger ones don't remember 9-11, but what a horrible, horrible feeling. I remember I went and snatched my children up out of school and, and, and took them home and called my husband and wanted him to come home. He was in a plant somewhere, and, and he didn't, but still. Then they, when those towers was removed, and they built this thing to um, as, a, as a memorial, for 9-11 and you can go where the Twin Towers were and, and you can look and, and see and, and there's names. James and I went to the World War II uh, wall in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And, and I remember walking up and down looking to see if I saw a Netterville or if I saw an Avance because that was my bloodline and I wanted to see if I, if I could see anybody that I, that I wouldn't have known them, but you know, <laughs> hallelujah. And then we went over to the Lincoln Memorial and we climbed those stairs and we saw Abe Lincoln, a statue of Abe Lincoln sitting up there. And, and I was reminded of his speech at Gettysburg. And then I was reminded of when he signed those slaves into freedom. Hallelujah. Those things stand as a, as a memorial of where we've come from yeah. and maybe where we're going. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Headstones. When you, if you ever attend my mom and dad's grave, there's a nice pretty headstone. And it's got Bible verses on it that my dad wanted on there. But that's to remember them by. I go there, and they're not there, and if they are, I don't know. I don't know what, you know, I know that there's a greater thing on the other side, and I don't know if his, their soul made it there immediately, or if they're, but it didn't matter. 
Because what I do know, the memorial that they left here, right. what they left here for me to carry right. on, I know what that is, Sister Gail. Yes, amen. amen. But you go out there, and Brother Stewart's mom, he put a headstone on her grave, and when you go there, you, you get to see a picture of Sister Faye and, and, and the year she was born and the year that she that she passed from this life. It's a memorial. It's to remind us of that person, that mother. I cannot think about Faye uh, Dykes without thinking about the two boys that sat in this church and how many times she must have prayed for them. Yes, yes. All right. She got to see Brother Stewart come to God and live for God for several years. But Mike, I think about it all the time. It gave me such hope when he started coming and he continued to come and I watched God transform him little by little and it gave me hope. It gave me hope in that mother's oh, prayer. Brother Stewart said that she went into her, literally went into her closet and she would pray. When he got those sticky notes down on that wall, I wonder how many of them had Mike's name on it. How many times she cried and said, I'm not giving up, God. You know, you know Joshua put those stones there for a memorial and you brought Israel out. And if you can bring Israel out, you can break my son Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure if you thought hard enough, you would think about a time in your life that maybe God has brought you through something. Hallelujah. I remember as a, as a, as a teenager, and well, actually, I really wasn't a teenager. I was probably close to getting married. And, and uh, well, as a teenager, Aunt Lou and Uncle Charles would come to the house and and I would think, oh, I don't know why she lives for God. Every time you turn around, she gets knocked off her feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I remember, matter of fact, I, I, I said something to my dear sweet friend just this past week. I won't tell you who she is because I wouldn't want anybody else to you know, if you knew, it would be all right. But if he's departing, I just wouldn't want that to be out there. But I remember telling her this week, well, you know, so-and-so, Aunt Lou, I remember Aunt Lou saying one time, actually, Aunt Lou said it a lot of times. <laughs> I hate that he's there. But at least when I go to bed at night, I know where he's at. I don't have to worry. If he's laying in a ditch somewhere. Come on. Or if he's in a home somewhere, then somebody's done something to him. See, she built a memorial in her life. She stacked some stones, and I was able to watch that. Come on. And from that, I grew strength. From that, I was able to say, you know what, God? You will save my boys. Right. You will save my children. I watched William Graham, Aunt Mary's son, and y'all, I promise ain't none of this in here. <laughs> I watched William. I'll never forget, I was getting married, and Aunt Mary was my wedding coordinator, and uh, I didn't pay her, thank God, I didn't have to, but Aunt Mary was helping me make sure, my mama make sure everything was done because mom was doing other stuff, her and Aunt Lou behind the scenes, and Aunt Mary was going to make sure daddy was kept in line. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget when, when William got in trouble. But what I'll never forget, it rings true in my ears all the time. That was years and years ago, long before we had children. Well, he had had, I guess it was after we had children. But when he got out, it was before we had children. But I remember him sitting at Aunt Lou's table and he's having a conversation with Alva. And 
trying to make William feel good. If we love him, he's, he's part of us. He's part of that bloodline. And we don't want him to feel bad because he done done a few, few months, like a year, year and a half. And he's out. And I'll never forget him telling that. And I was telling him that he had really not done anything bad, anything wrong. You got to remember, William's older than any of us. So, you know, and Alvin and my brother were younger than us. But I'll never forget William looking at Alvin telling him, you have no idea who I sold something to. And he killed them. Or they sold it to a child. And that child died. Jesus. May not have been a good thing. But he took that memorial, William did, and he stacked up stones up. And he said, I'm going to remember this part of my life because I never want to go back, Brother Mike. I don't ever want to go back to where that was because there was no God there. I didn't know God there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sure if you think about it, you can think about answered prayers that God has answered for you. Yes. That you've seen God move in your life. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Mary, an answered prayer. If you just look on the side of you, you are in front of you, you will see an answered prayer. Now, Lydia took the babies to the, to the park Friday, I think it was, and there was good old faithful Sister Pat. You gotta love Sister Pat. Yes. If you don't have love for Sister Pat Beard in your heart, then my friends, you probably need to ask God to forgive you. You might not make it. Hallelujah! But that was a faithful woman. Yes. I went to her home many a times when I was in church the first time, and I listened to that man. I listened to him put her down. I listened to him talk bad about her. She just kept on building that story. Just put another, just go ahead and put another, another stone on that, on that stack. Just go ahead, because that's all right, because before it's all said and done, God said to whoever else's husband, I know he's gonna save mine. Right. And before he passed, before he passed, and it wasn't in his death, but before he passed, that man was faithful to the house of God, Amen. from what I understand. But she was a faithful woman. Hallelujah. She could have given in many, many times. And, and, and the world, the world would have looked at her and thought she, it was okay, Sister Madison. It was fine. She, she had every right to stop. But see, Joshua had built that, that, that pillar of stones. He had stacked those stones back in the book of Joshua. And she knew she had read that somewhere in the word of God. And she knew. That that was still a memorial because everything I read, Brother Trey says, that those rocks are still there today. I don't know. I've never been to Israel. But I believe that they're still there. You know why I believe it? Because the Word of God says, because it will be for generations to come. Generations will see that. And when they see that, they will know, Brother Mike, that I am God. I am the God that delivered them. I am the God that set them free. Hallelujah. 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 I'm sure you can stop and you can think about a blessing that came your way when you didn't think it, that anything could turn the situation around. That's a memorial unto yes. you. That's something that you can look back on. Yes. It is important if you don't journal, it is important that you journal. I know you guys may think that's a little sissy, but I'm telling you, if you journal, you can go back when you're struggling. Sister Gail, when it looks like there's no hope for that son of yours, when there looks like there's no hope and you haven't heard from him, you can go back and say, you know what? I remember. I remember when I wanted a new truck. I needed a way to go. And God, you supplied, you supplied my every need. I remember that. Yes. Yes. That's what memorials are. It's for us to look back on and say, that's where I came from. That's where I came from. Sometimes we get lost on our journey in this life, and we slip and fall. We lose sight 
at the moment of where we're at, but it's a memorial. Think about a lighthouse. It's a beacon. It was a memorial. It is a memorial. It's set up on a hill and that light shines. And when the ships are tossed and turned and they don't know which way to go, if that light shines, they can say, hey, hey, there's a lighthouse. There's a light. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Jesus is our lighthouse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When our loved ones passed, Brother Stewart, everybody in here, you know, I can really have a pity party. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, every once in a while, Brother Stewart, for about five minutes, I have one. I really do. I can stay there and be lost. Or I can look back and say, God, when I was so angry at you. Sister Robin, you heard me right. God, when I was so angry at you for those five years. And I came to church and I sat in the pew. And I can remember sitting in that back one night. And Aunt Lou and Uncle Charles, Mom and Daddy was staying shy. They didn't want to push. And Aunt Lou and Uncle Charles doing everything they could, Trace, begging me to give in to God and let God heal me. But Brother Stewart, somewhere along the line, I got screwed up. I thought if I let you heal me, then I'm going to let go of this grief. And then she won't be remembered no more. And right now, as long as I hold on to this pain, I'm holding on to her. How stupid. How stupid. But I can remember my dad saying how many times grief would overtake him. And he would call on the name of Jesus. And I remember one day sitting in the bathroom, and I heard the voice of God. Now, I said, "Huh? Now or never?" I remember getting up on the mic and saying, "No. From this moment on, I might not do everything right, but from this moment on, God, I'm going to serve you with everything that I have." Whether my family comes God. That's kind of how we have to get. We have to say it doesn't matter if you don't answer this prayer. I'm still going to serve you. Because I'm going to serve you because Calvary was a memorial. Calvary was a memorial. When you rose from that tomb, you said that where you go, I can go. That's a memorial. I can look and say, no matter what I go through down here, no matter what I go through down here, I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. Because Calvary is a memorial. Calvary is my hope. Jesus is my hope. Because he didn't stay on that cross, Sister Olivia. And he didn't stay in a tomb. He rose from the grave. And he said, hey, Jennifer, hey, over 2,000 years, way ahead. Where I'm going, you can go. Where I'm going, you can go. So even, I think about sometimes, and I know this is really stupid, and I know, I, I seriously, maybe none of y'all ever do this, but I sometimes look at people, Brother Stewart, and I think, what do they think about me? Now that my mom and dad and my brother and sister are both gone. What do they think about me? What are their thoughts? Do they feel sorry for me? Do they pity me? Do they think I wasn't good enough? What are people's thoughts of me? That's about the five minute pity party I have sometimes. And I say no. God, because somewhere along the way, my life might not be up until no years. But there's somebody out there. There's one person out there that's going to say, Jennifer Payton was a memorial. She lost. Everything. Oh, God. But she never 
never lost her faith in God. She never lost her footsteps. She was stacking stones the whole time. The whole time she was stacking stones. She was building a memorial. Hallelujah. If I ever had, if I ever could leave anything, a memory for Trace and Weston and Olivia and Madison and Carmen and those six little boys and that one precious little girl that God gave me. I don't really know what to do with her. Ask Madison. I know how to spend money on her though. Oh, but if I could ever leave anything, I would want the memorial to be.
if the world understands the impact that a memorial has. Yeah. All right. A stone, a man made out of stone in Washington, D.C. If the world understands the oh, impact my. of that, yeah. why is it that we, the children of the living God, cannot understand how important the stones are? We can't understand how important stacking those stones are. There is no game that you ever play. There's no amount of football, my dear son, that you could ever play that would bring a better name to you than being a man of God. Right. Than being the man of God that God called you to be. And those two boys that say, Daddy, Daddy. Just last night, Preston said, Daddy. Let's go play football. Let's go throw the football. But this morning, Preston said, No, Mama, don't turn that off. Keep singing when she was worshiping. Man, stacking stones. Stacking stones. All right. yes. That's good. And poor Brother Mike. Believe it or not, Brother Mike, you're stacking some stones. Yes. You've come a mighty long way. And I don't know, she's probably got a big old, big old mansion up there waiting for y'all. She probably didn't have a whole lot here, did she, Brother Stewart? But one thing she had was a mother's heart. She loved him no matter what they did. And so somewhere up there in glory, she got a big old mansion. And I believe that when we get there, she's going to know that might have made it home. <laughs> she stacked some stones away somewhere. She built a memorial. You know how I know that? Because he found that memorial, didn't he, Rose Stewart? He found that memorial in that closet may not look like much to anybody else. She could not buy a new world. She couldn't probably give you $100 when she passed. But what she gave you was far, far above anything yes, any amen. millionaire could ever receive. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I leave you tonight with this thought. you stack some stones away in your life? Do you have some memorials in your life of things that God's done for you? I have. I do. And I call up on those sometimes. When I'm having that five minute pity party ain't there, I have to call them, I have to call back and say, can you just roll the curtain back just a little bit? So I can see that stone over there that I put a couple of years ago. Stand here, please. My daddy used to tell me when I would get up and, and I would, I don't, I don't know why, but I don't like to call it preaching. I don't know why. I, just, I feel like sometimes I'm not worthy enough. But he would tell me, Jim, you got to learn to give an altar call. So tonight I was going to say, the altars are open. You want to come to the front and pray? 